Uh, it's hard to get current statistics about how clean alcohol burns compared to modern cars. And I'm doing some translation now between the old studies and the new studies because no one's putting any money into testing it except in Brazil, where I'll be going soon to get some new data. But back in the, uh, when we did this, and there was, was a lot of testing going on in the 80s, we were looking at 80 to 95 percent reduction in all categories of pollution. The 80 percent was in nitrous oxides, 95 percent was in carbon monoxide, which takes high temperatures to produce, and in hydrocarbons, which there are virtually none. So we were getting enormous reductions in pollution, and that was with car engines using carburetors that were you know, not very efficient. Now, Gordon Cooper and I, Gordon Cooper's the, you might remember him, he's the guy who was in that movie, The Right Stuff, he was an astronaut, you know, hotshot aerospace engineer. He had some experiences when he was in the service where he had to get back for a launch because one of the other guys got sick and there was, he was at a, uh, a rural airport where he had his Air Force jet but he couldn't get any jet fuel on the weekend. So he called the local racetrack where they were using methanol to run a race that day for the you know, funny cars, et cetera. And so he got a whole you know, tank truck full of methanol and put it in the jet and said, uh, what the hell, if I wreck it, I still I get back there, you know, because he's a crazy man, you know. So he goes, goes up there and cranks it up and figured, well, I'll get to the next airport because, you know, there's only half the heating value in methanol, which is the alcohol they used at the racetrack, than there was in the jet fuel. So if I can just get to the next airport, I can fill up. Well, this weird thing happened. As he started going up and up in elevation, his fuel consumption went down. And he was getting better mileage than, you would, than he was getting normally because as you go higher in elevation, there's less pressure. Pressure. Atmosphere. Air. air and less oxygen. And gasoline, or in this case, turbine fuel, get, gets very inefficient. So he made it all the way back to Texas on one tank load of methanol. That got him all interested in alcohol. So when I was working with him in LA, he was trying to certify jet engines for alcohol in the 80s, and we were testing the emissions. And we had the emission probe sitting there in the exhaust, and none of the needles were moving. Well, dang, this thing's broken. We're looking at it, we tap it on the, you know, is it, it doesn't work, you know. We set it down in front of the engine. We turn around and we're doing something else. And I turn back and I say, Gordon, it's not broken. We put the probe back behind the exhaust, no needles would move. The air from LA going into the turbine engine was dirtier than the air coming out of the turbine engine. We could, couldn't even measure, measure emissions coming out of the thing. So by running alcohol in engines, you clean the air. <laughs> so, um, and, that, and now you can see why. Because the lower temperature, especially with nitrous oxides, are strictly a product of high temperature. The more efficient burning so instead of getting 25% of your fuel as work, several DOE studies showed, you know, reliable, you know, not laboratory, but, you know, in-field results of 38% efficiency, which, you know, is just really unheard of in internal combustion engines normally. And the way that was attained in this case was going further than the basic conversion. Alcohol is 106 octane. So this means it, it resists pinging. And some of you here are old enough to remember cars that pinged. Anybody remember pinging? You go up a hill and all of a sudden, tap, 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 you know? Well, well, actually, most cars nowadays have a ping sensor, listens for inaudible pinging, and adjusts the timing. So, you know, it's not so common anymore. But back then, if you had cheap fuel, you know, uh, low octane fuel, you'd get pinging especially if you owned a, a car from the late 60s, because back then gasoline was like 103 octane uh, for premium and regular was 93 or 94. So cars were made with what, what was called a high compression ratio. Now a compression ratio, if you're looking at the inside of a cylinder of a car, looking at a cutaway of the cylinder, and you've got the piston down here with a connecting rod, and the piston goes up and down in the cylinder. The difference between when the piston is all the way down and when it's all the way up, the distance in that space is the compression ratio. So a lot of cars, especially you know, in the, the bad old days of the early 80s, had like a 7 or 8 to 1 
compression ratio, meaning that the amount of volume in the cylinder would be reduced to one-eighth of its volume when the piston went up. Now, if you went much higher than that, you got pinging or pre-ignition. Pre-ignition happens when you start squeezing the fuel, and of course there's the same amount of energy in the fuel, but the temperature goes up because you're compressing the energy in that, that atmosphere to a smaller space. Think about this room. Okay, it's like 80 degrees in here now, 75 degrees. If we took all of us and all the air in this room and squeezed us down to one-eighth of the volume, we'd have the same amount of energy. But now it's in a smaller space, the temperature climbs. So it might be hundreds of degrees. So in this case, you reach a point at which the fuel will explode on its own. And if it does that before the spark plug fires, that's pinging or pre-ignition. So that was really damaging to the engine because you'd get a shock wave going in two directions at once and you could cause holes in the piston, etc. So for cars not to have that happen, they had low compression because of the crappy quality of the gasoline. But race drivers have known forever that when you use alcohol, you can raise the compression air ratio up to 12 and a half to one or even as high as 14 or 15 to one on alcohol compared to gasoline. The higher the compression ratio, the more work you get out of the explosion in the fuel. So that's one of the main reasons why diesel engines are more efficient, getting more work for a given amount of fuel and, you know, in some cases better mileage, because they have very high compression ratios. And in fact, diesel engines don't even have spark plugs. They use pinging as a way of actually running the engine. It compresses till it explodes on its own. And the way they control when it explodes primarily is how the fuel is formulated. So